And all fantasy analysis community members, welcome back to another round results video here for round 21. I just want to kick this off with a few shout outs here. We had Marcus who reached out to me asking to shout him out and and you know, basically so he can show off in front of his friends considering he's sitting at 21st overall. So very, very irregularly that we ever get a chance to, to be this high on the rank. So quite happy to do that. 14.13 million is the overall team value. And yeah, 21st sitting there after 21 rounds. I feel like that deserves a shout out for sure. Also met a young fella on Saturday night named Ryan. He's a team named Rambunctious Rhino there. And um, yeah, cool to see another you know, person that watches my videos went out and about. It's funny, he came over with his with his phone there sitting with NRL Fantasy up and I just knew it straight away <laughs> someone that watches the video. So um, really cool like to, to go out and, and have a few people like recognize who you are and, and so they watch your videos and just have a bit of a chat about fantasy and all that. So if you ever do see me out, I'd, I'd love to have a, have a chat there, but a shout out to Ryan. And then lastly, we've got Hamish, our supervisor in the Discord group. He's actually raising some money for suicide prevention, which is a really a really great cause through um, Mullets for Mental Health. And so currently he's, he's raised about $300 and I'm just gonna pop his link down in the description below guys. And if you would like to, to donate to that, I know he would be really appreciative. I, I also will be as well. So yeah, I would appreciate that if you, if you want to have a look into that and see what he's doing there, that will be cool. So that link's in the description below. But following from that, we're gonna get into the rankings at the moment, this is the top 20 we're sitting at currently. So 18, 822 is where Marcus is at. And then we'll scroll all the way up to number one. So 18, 822. And basically there, he's sitting, you know, almost pretty much 300 points behind the leader. So not ridiculous, but still a long way back considering most of these teams are fairly similar now. And, you know, points, uh, you know, big differences in points are very hard to come by. And, and, and Will, I love the amateurs, end up getting 1176 this week, which is just crazy. 1230 for Josh B. And then, you know, a, a lighter week for Will Ennis, who was our a leader and is now back, you know, 52 points, which is crazy. So let's have a look at this 1200 score, which is just incredible. Basically means you've got no bad ones. Even at DCE at 46 as well. So Heinz's captain was solid one. Dill Brown, Reese Robson, even with a lower game. So still had guys that were getting 40s, for example, when they really shouldn't have. But uh, other than that, you've got Harry Grant, obviously off and a big one there. Obviously no low ones, but just shows the absolute quality that we've got in here. You get a, a bunch of scores over 80. Munster, Murray, for example, along with Heinz as captain, and you're going to do pretty well. So 12.30 for Josh really puts him two points behind the lead now. So it's going to be really, really exciting coming in to the back end of the season. And just a little scroll for the for the top 20 there. And there you go, very, very exciting there for the top 20. And and the people score was sitting at 654 this week. So very, very close to where we were last week there. We had 1,050, 1,045, whatever it was exactly, 1,057. So a solid score without being spectacular. We obviously had Boothy with 11, which is gonna hurt us a little bit. And Cook is captain, so it stopped us from getting about 30 extra points. But again, that is how it is. Uh, and then guys like Garrick getting 37, you know, very similar you know, to that other team. They had uh, Manu there, we had Aiken, so that 40 is the same, but really, really good scores on the interchange. And, and a few people have mentioned this already, so I will bring it up, that the trade for Pap instead of Offhand Galway has been a little bit of a, a sad one considering Joe, big Joe O got 74 this week. So other than that, our, yeah, big question mark what we do now. We got Boothy in there. We're gonna have to probably bring in Jamin Salmon, I'd say will be the way we have to go to play this as one of those cheap guys, unless someone else pops up that we think can score better. But James is probably the man to play in this one. And I expect that we're gonna have some decent scores out of everyone else. So not too stressed on that front, but that is our people squad this week. We have two trades remaining and about 200 odd K. So we do have a bit of room if we wanted to go up a little bit higher, anywhere around that you know, 550 mark, we'd be able to do from a Palacia or a Booth to, to get those guys. And there's obviously a few potential options in, in and around that price, uh, but you know, few and far between, let's be honest. So it might just be easier going for a cheaper guy and leaving that little bit extra cash, like you know Salmon, who can score somewhere around a 40 that would be similar to someone at that 550 mark anyway. Uh, and then using that, using that last bit of salary for a big upgrade or a if there is a suspension or injury, we could upgrade that suspended or injured player. Would probably be the theory because none of these guys are really standing out if we're looking at guys in that mid 500s or low 500s kind of bracket there. Uh, yeah, Brandon Smith, these types of guys, they can all average around 40, to be honest with you. 
not too exciting at this point. So that's where the people's squad's at. Been a bit of a tough, you know, downfall from, from where we're at. You know, a lot of rounds back sitting, you know, round 14, we're 205th. Round 10, we're 106, for example. Round 8, 162. So we're sitting really, really in a great position for a long time and then slowly been, um, you know, moving upwards and, and not having a lot of great decisions overall. They haven't panned out. So some of them, have, you know, you're looking at a 50-51 and just didn't fall our way, for example. But uh, at this stage, we're looking to make sure that we stay inside the top 1,000. We're never, as a people squad, allowed to exit that top 1,000 is, is my goal anyway. Um, I think that's pretty cool. For, for 3,000 in the Discord and however many people are voting each and every week, uh, some vote some week, some don't vote, some vote the other, then I think that's pretty cool to have that many people's input and still do really well. So that's the people squad, guys. We will move on to the head-to-head -head team and check out their matchups. We had a few uh, as elimination games and then a few, it was their last round before the finals. So very, very interesting there. We'll catch you in that section. Okay, guys, we've got the head-to-head -head squad here, sitting 173 overall in a solid position, scoring 1,042 this week. So we'll move to our leagues and see where we're at here. We had a nice win in that first league there. Did have a loss against Eddie Durham, who is kind of currently sitting in 23rd position or something ridiculous. So this is the biggest one. We're sitting in six now, heading into the finals. We did have one extra round. So in terms of our matchup this week, we come up against Daniel Chapman, who is NRL Fantasy Elite, what was it? Fantasy Elite? Fantasy Lounge, the uh, elite, elite defeat. So the, the small group there of a lot of guys that have been really, really good across the years. So if we're looking at our matchup, Nat Butch is going to be an interesting one. Uh, and Cam McInnes, sorry, that's going to be our, our little matchup there. Is if McInnes, can, can he still get decent minutes? Will he get less points than Butcher? Can Cook have a, a real big game and, and Grant go back to normal? Then Fafita is going to be a big one there. We'll obviously have DCE against each other, which is fine. Uh, and yeah, is Crichton going to get back to normal? Is he going to score amazingly again? I have Munster, which is really nice. This is the big one here. So Cola, how's he going to be able to go in this type of matchup? And then we're going to need a decent one from Ruben Garrick, which unfortunately hasn't been happening of recent time. You know, Tamalolo versus Toho. How's that one going to go? We we'll obviously have for feeder as well. And having Joe O there is going to be nice. So I think this is going to be a really close matchup for looking at that one there. Obviously, I have a couple of trades left, so I could potentially do that, um, you know, heading into this into this one here by matching. So yeah, it goes the matching ones will make it a little bit easier. So players we've got matching, obviously plenty of them there. And then the guys that we don't, Cook v. Grant, McInnes v. Butcher, Munster v. House. Yes, I don't have pain there. Cole vs. Aiken, the big one. Toto vs. Elliot. Ooh, that's a tough one. Um, and Joe, I think we've got him above Tamalolo. So yeah, it'll be interesting. We have to win obviously every game from here on in, considering we're coming six this week, this year. And not ideal, considering where the position we're at in this uh in this league but there's a lot of really good players here shane hewitt has won before for example uh you got kyle lomas in there obviously really really good eddie i know i've heard of seen seen maddie a bunch um yeah but there's a the top eight so fun fun for that one i'm excited for that i obviously had a loss here in strictly guns but does that in is that in qualifying oh it is too okay so i lost my i lost my first qualifying in that so yeah a big one for, for those guys so come up against Katoni's footwork and we need to win that one. So that'll be a little bit annoying. Uh, in terms of bunts of Bunty, was that in the qualifying as well? Okay, it was. So I don't have to play the semi for that one, which is delightful. Much easier for that. And then we'll move to the B's knee. So I lost that one. Please tell me this was not in the finals. Damn it. Oh, uh -oh. yeah. So I lost the final, <laughs> damn it. All right, we're making it tough for ourselves. So 1,042 this week, not good enough, apparently. We won the next two, which is good. Next three, next four. Okay, so it's those first few that I really struggle with. And just means that this round is going to be super important for me. So in terms of being a head-to-head -head player from now, it's going to be very important to pretty much go all in this week and try and win that matchup. And that's you know where you're at this week. You've got to have a look at your opponent and see if there's a way that you can beat them this week because it is uh, obviously do or die from here on in. And you've got to make, you know, obviously make that bit of a bit of a push, bit of a go out on a limb this week to try and win that and then limp your way through the next two rounds and hope that you don't have the suspensions and injuries that may come up. So two trades, 28K in the bank. Obviously don't have much wheel room in my emergencies, but the question is how do we get potentially a small upgrade with, with Cola? With him not scoring too great, is there another center on the rise that's a little bit cheaper at the moment? that we can get a better score from, or we just try and you know, hold
hold strong with him up against the Titans this week. That could be a decent idea, considering they had a really tough one against the Bunnies. So kind of a lucky matchup for Kohler and also DCE and Garrick, for example. So this might be the week that I get a little bit lucky with those three guys, considering they really killed me. 46 is captain for DCE was a tough one. And then Kohler and Garrick, very, very tough one there. And you had a couple of 44s, Harris, McInnes, you had 25 from To'o. Um, and we would like some uh, a real big score from Fafita would be nice in uh, in one of these weeks to come, especially considering we brought him in a few weeks ago and haven't had anything super exciting yet. So yes, we're the head-to-head -head teams looking at the moment. So, so we'll have a bit of a play in terms of potential trades this week. Do we go all in this week considering round 22? We've got four left. It might be hard to, but again, it's a very much a, a do or die match up in, in those rules, the tough leagues anyway. So a few of those I'm, I'm winning by a little bit and then some I'm, I'm getting beat if I don't you know, step up to the mark. So very, very interesting. It shows that you can have one average week. Like I didn't really lose any ranks. So what, what was that, 173 this week? Oh, sorry, around 20, 173, 132. So I went up 40 ranks. So not ridiculous, but still to, to lose all the matchups there pretty much is not ideal at all. But that's um, the head-to-head -head team. And we moved to my team, which didn't go so well at all, considering there's Tamalolo in there, Jerome Hughes, a few others. Anyway. Okay, well, that wasn't a very exciting week. We came in under 1,000 when this bloke's getting 1,200, 1,100. Jeez, Louisa. All right, 997, considering, uh, and we lost 260, 270 ranking points there, so not great. But when you're looking at that bench there, I did stuff up. I found out pretty, uh, too late that I could have looped Savage there, and I would have taken Pole's score for sure. So, Cola, Pole, unfortunately, 24 points I missed out on, which would have helped me out a little bit, but yeah. Obviously shows the importance of, of being up to date with some of those injuries. It did pop up pretty late and I was out doing something. So unfortunately, didn't get to make that change on the app. But again, just trying to be there for, even just checking it out before games in general. Yes, check the, the final team list, which we all do, but just checking your teams. And, and that really wasn't something that was announced publicly. It was kind of like, check it on your phone. And then yeah, it was just like, he's just out this week. So yeah, knowing that I would have been able to put Cola at five and be able to loop, you know, potentially loop him and you know, not obviously not take his 19 and put Polly in there. So anywho, that happens. We had Sam Lola 34. We had McKinnis 44, Reedy, Hughes, Cola. <laughs> is all I can think of. The rest of the, the rest of the guys are pretty good. I had a lot of scores over 50, uh, but a tough finish with Sam Lolo yesterday. And the bench was, yeah, not pretty at all. But anywho, we got three trades remaining and, and still plenty that we can do in this squad. And the biggest question mark now is we got Reedy and and Hughes. So Hughes, he looks like he's out for one to two weeks, one to three weeks max. Do we look to do something with him? Do we look to make an upgrade somewhere else? Do we go down from like a Hosking to a Salmon? Do, you know, so we can upgrade elsewhere and just leave ourselves with one for the last three weeks. That could be a potential one. Whether that's you know upgrading uh, Reedy, whether it's upgrading a Hughes, something like that, I think could be solid. And then finding out what's happening with uh, Xavier, if he's going to be back this week or not. But yeah, that's with the team. I, I was really happy with how we were building. The, the trades ended up working out well in terms of bringing in Munster because he picked up the 93 and DC only the 46. Obviously lost out by 25 on Crichton, but I won by you know, almost 50 with Munster. So about 20, 25 points that I won this week on those two trades, but yeah, we'll see how that pans out over the next few weeks. Does Crichton go back to normal? Does uh, Munster uh, you know, and DCE kind of get closer together? Um, we'll work that out over the next few weeks, but yeah, we're looking to still push back into the top thousand. It's been, yeah, not our best year for sure. Uh, very much, very much so not our best year, but it is what it is. And yeah, I'm very thankful for all of you guys still watching my videos. I'm you know, hopefully making some some unbiased opinions there. It's just my own uh, my own team, as as we always do. It's very hard to to separate that when you're making selections for your own team. But I yeah, I hope you guys um yeah love my advice and I appreciate you guys for being here watching. But that is my team. There's a few things we might need to do, but we'll work that out through the week. So I hope you enjoyed that. Like, subscribe, guys, and we'll catch you in the next video. Just remember to check that uh, description below for that uh, link for for Hamish's uh, charity donation. So appreciate that. See you later.